hard stand and pulling round in front of the control tower. A51, early version. No teardrop cockpit there. Captured Junkers 88, now that's something. And the Spitfire, followed by another. And then the white Lockheed Hudson, Coastal Command, British markings. Closer for version. Fortress beyond that. Same scene. Wonderful for the aircraft recognition buffs. Recognising these wonderful old planes from long ago. Now there's a wonderful view. Lucky Lightning just being crossed over by a B-17. What a wonderful streamlined design that was. Howard Hughes had a hand in the design of that. Another fine scene we have here, the B-17 being towed backwards by a cleat track. Considerable skill in the manoeuvring of these. Large aircraft, and look at the numerous personnel around. Very fine shot indeed. Another magnificent view of a B-17 of the 325th, flying the Stars and Stripes and the Confederate flag. Most unusual, but thought to be because of its final mission about to take place. Here we have ground personnel, and they're bravely defusing bombs that weren't used for one reason or another, brought back from raids. And here they are preparing a mission in which Doc Furness himself was to take part. This was because it was a commemorative 100th mission flown by the 92nd group. More defusing going on here. Quite lightweight bombs, these. Got confidence in what they're doing. The way they're throwing them around. Here's a distant view of bombing up going on. Obviously a lengthy procedure. And here we can just see the newly introduced Disney rocket slung underneath and behind front wheel. Another shot there, seen more clearly. A pair of these. Navigator, looking pleased with himself, and pilot. Along with Doc Furness, obviously, aboard. For this, the 92nd's 100th mission. Disney rockets can be plainly seen here on takeoff. The personnel taking photographs. Very special aerial view of a B-17 here. It's in close formation, taken by Doc Furness.